Yuchuan Shengshu was one of the most influential Chan masters of his day, a patriarch of the East Mountain teaching of Chan Buddhism. Shengshu was Dharma heir of Daman Hongren, honored by Wu Zetian of the Tang Dynasty, and the putative author of the Guan Xin Lun. A text once attributed to Bodhidharma. Shengshu was born in Weishi County, suburb of Luogong, Henan, then secondary capital of China. His family name was Li. His family was aristocratic and may have been related to the Tang Dynasty imperial family he was educated in the Chinese classics and Taoism and became a Buddhist. At the age of 13 when he went to the government granaries at Kaifeng during a famine to plead the release of grain to the starving population. There he met an unnamed Buddhist and was inspired to take up Buddhism. After some seven years of a homeless life visiting the famous mountain centers of China, Shengshu took the full precepts of Buddhist monk in 625 at Tangkong Monastery in Luoyang, the Buddhist center at the end of Silk Road since the 2nd century. Traces of his activities for the next 25 years were lost, the Chuan Fabao Ji claimed that Shengshu studied the Buddhist regulations and ceremonies and devoted himself to the practice of meditation and the development of wisdom. In 651 he began to study under Hongren. The aforementioned Chuan Fabao Ji states that he studied with Hongren for six years, thereby leaving in 657, before the arrival of the sixth patriarch, Huiyang, with whom Shengshu supposedly had the famous verse writing contest. It is not clear why, but sometime around 665 to 668, Shengshu was banished by the emperor and remained in hiding for ten years, returning to public notice between 676 to 679. He initially took up residence at the Jade Spring Monastery but soon one was built for him, the Monastery of the Six Perfections where he spent the next quarter century. In late 700 the Empress Wu invited Shengshu to the capital at Luoyang to teach Chan Buddhism. His welcome in 701 was by all accounts quite spectacular. The annals of the transmission of the Dharma treasure describe Shengshu's path being bedecked with flowers and the master riding on a litter of the type reserved for the imperial family. In an unprecedented gesture, the Empress knelt before the Chan Master, touching her forehead to the ground in reverence. The annals go on to say that from princes and nobles down, everyone, in the capital, took refuge in him. For the last five years of his life, Shengshu traveled between the two capitals of Luoyang and Chang'an. Preaching the Buddhist Dharma before passing away at his monastery, Tumen Si reportedly sitting in meditation, on February 28, 706. The Lenki Shizhi Ji state that his last words were Chu Chu Chiao, which Professor Season Yanagita translates as the teachings. Of the expedient means have been made direct the reigning emperor Thongzong granted the posthumous title to Tong Chancha. Only the second time in Chinese Buddhism and the first for 300 years that this imperial honor had been bestowed. One of the most well-known and cherished legends in Chan is the verse-writing contest involving Shengshu and Huining at Hongren's monastery. The story can be found in the platform Sutra of Huineng, but it was almost certainly not an historical event. The account given in the platform sutra is as follows, Hongren, realizing he was coming to the end of his years, instructed his monks to compose a mind verse to demonstrate their level of attainment. The winner of the contest would be named sixth patriarch and receive the robe of Bodhidharma. None of the monks dared to write anything, deferring to Shengshu who they believed would be the rightful Dharma heir. Shengshu, full of doubts about his own motivations and with the weight of expectation upon him, chose to write a verse anonymously on a corridor wall in the night. Shengshu's verse read, publicly, Hongren praised this verse and instructed all his monks to recite it. Privately, Hongren asked Shengshu to compose another verse as Hongren believed that Shengshu's verse did not display true understanding of the Dharma. Shengshu was unable to compose another verse. Meanwhile, the illiterate Huining heard the monks chanting this verse and asked about it. When told the story of Hongren's contest, Huining asked a monk to take him to the wall where Shengshu's verse was written. There he asked someone to write his own verse. According to a later version of the Platform Sutra, Huining's verse read the account says that publicly Hongren denigrated this verse but that later. In private, he taught Huining the true meaning of the Diamond Sutra, thereby awakening Huining to the Sutra's profound teaching. Hongren gave Huining the robe of transmission and told him to flee the monastery in secret at night. According to the legend, Huining thereby became the sixth and last patriarch of Chan. Shenhui, a successor of Huining, publicly criticized Shengshu and associated him with the Northern School, a term which Shenhui is thought to have invented. He claimed this school taught a gradualist idea of enlightenment as opposed to Huining's supposedly superior sudden teaching.
However, although a substantial amount of Shenhui's polemics survive, he is never recorded as mentioning this verse contest, which he presumably would have done in order to bolster the case for his descent from the superior Huineng. For this reason, in part, scholars doubt the historicity of the verse contest. Instead, it is thought that the Platform Sutra was composed by the Oxhead School in an attempt to reconcile the artificial split between the so-called northern and southern schools. According to the Buddhologist John McRae, the two verses were likely intended to complement one another and speak of two sides of one practice. Further, Shengshu's verse does not explicitly suggest gradualism, but rather alludes to a need for constant, unending practice. Whatever the case may be, Historically speaking it is clear that Shengshu was a far more respected and prominent teacher than the virtually unknown Huineng, who only became famous through later hagiography, including the Platform Sutra. Although Shengshu was labeled a teacher of the Northern School of Chan and subsequent histories of Chan, he saw himself as teaching in the East Mountain tradition of Hongren. The Northern School appellation was applied in the early 730s by the monk Shenhui who accused Shengshu of teaching a gradualist approach to Chan Buddhism. Shengshu was highly educated and studied the Buddhist scriptures assiduously. He reinterpreted the scriptures as metaphors of skillful means for contemplation of the mind, advocating the attainment of Buddhahood in all daily activities, here and now. Every act was seen as religious practice. For example, he saw simple activities, like taking a bath, as a religious act. He taught that soap used to clean away dirt is actually the ability of discrimination by which one can ferret out the sources of evil within oneself. Cleaning the mouth with toothpicks is nothing less than the truth by which one puts an end to false speech. Overt religious activities such as burning of incense were seen as the unconditioned dharma, which perfumes the tainted and evil karma of ignorance and cause it to disappear. In meditation practice, Shengshu taught that the student should develop the innate ability of the mind to illuminate and understand all things and to see the emptiness of all things. He taught that there is a profound stillness and tranquility in all things. A northern school text abbreviated as the five skillful means states, in purity there is not a single thing, peaceful and vast without limit, its untainedness is the path of Bodhi. The mind serene and enlightenment distinct, the body serenity is the Bodhi tree. Even though Shengshu and the so-called northern school were subsequently attacked as teaching a gradualist approach. To enlightenment, the Guanxin Lun, a northern text which Zen scholar John McRae claims is unquestionably written by him, Shengshu, emphatically states, it does not take long to witness this, enlightenment is in the instant. Why worry about your white hair? Shengxu's exhortations to constant. Unremitting practice gave Shenhui the opening to attack the teaching as gradualist. In any case, the vilification of Shengxu by Shenhui occurred some 30 years after Shengxu's death. During his lifetime, and especially his relatively brief teaching in the capital cities of the Tang dynasty, Shengxu's teachings were received with widespread acceptance and reverence. The influence of Shengshu's teachings on subsequent Chan doctrine and practices is still a somewhat open question. Thanks for watching.